my humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our dearest Lord, Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Loving Sai Rams, dear brothers and sisters, um, my name is Brother Pragasan Chitra, and I am from South Africa in Zone 9A. And it is my absolute pleasure and a divine opportunity to present this topic to you today, which is entitled Going Beyond Bhajans, A Way to Feel His Presence. So we know that bhajans is a medium um, through which we use to connect to God. And with this, we also know that within the organization, singing bhajans is a primary activity of which we all thoroughly love and enjoy. It is also a gateway through which members of the organization get to involved. And there's also opportunities to also participate at various levels within the organization in bhajans and so on as well. There are also three parts. And we know that some devotees prefer to get involved in seva or service activities. Some are really fond of bhajans, which is part of the devotion uh, wing of the organization. And some are more actively involved in study circles and also studying Sai literature, which is the path of knowledge. So then we ask ourselves, why is this topic so important? Going beyond bhajans, a way to feel his divine presence. It perhaps indicates that sometimes devotees are just confining themselves only to singing bhajans and not participating in other activities of the organization. And looking at these three parts, which are essentially vehicles which Swami has given us to feel his presence beyond bhajans and amongst these other activities as well. Devotees are of many kinds and generally they are on the path which they like and which they are comfortable with. But most importantly, we also like to ask ourselves, but if we love what we do, why do we need to go beyond bhajans? And the answer is, yes, we do. So some involve themselves directly into study circles, Sai literature, and also the path of knowledge as well. In Swami's declaration, on Avatar Day, Swami had sang the bhajan, Manasa Bhajare Guru Charanam. And this was on Avatar Declaration Day, where Swami had declared his avatarhood to the world by singing this bhajan. Swami, but looking at the meaning of the bhajan, this bhajan tells us that the mind is the culprit which comes between man and God. And when looking at this bhajan, and we know that when we also engage in bhajans, Swami says, I am present wherever my glory is sung. I am present wherever my work is done. And he himself had initiated his other spiritual activities involving service, knowledge, and awareness. When we look at how the mind can be mended in terms of what Swami has prescribed, we use the analogy of Swami being our divine doctor and looking at the mind, which is the culprit, and we have these three maladies connected to the mind. These three activities are not mutually inclusive, but they can also be undertaken by all spiritual aspirants for spiritual balance and growth. So we ask ourselves, what are these three maladies that we speak about? And what is the prescription that Swami has given us? So we have three maladies of the mind, which is the mala, vikshepa, and avarana. This can be seen as the mind being the culprit. And these three maladies are connected to the mind of which Swami, our divine doctor, wants to cure with the prescription of three spiritual activities. First, we look at the malla, which is the dirt or the dust on the mirror of the mind. This is caused by negative actions committed not only in this life, but also in previous lifetimes, which is imprinted on the subconscious mind. The remedy which Swami has given us to bend the body, bend the senses and end the mind. This is where we need to get more involved in service activities, which helps us to purify the mind. Center leaders can impress 
this particular aspect and motivate many devotees within the center to participate in seva activities or service activities irrespective of the wing. Next, we move over to Vikshepa. Vikshepa is the wavering or unsteady mind. With the purity of the mind is obtained from good actions, we can also look at embarking on the sacred activity, which is the path of devotion. This is a prescription for the wavering of the mind. To remedy this, activities can include bhajans, and Swami says that seva without sadhana is spiritual exercise, and it is bondage, but sadhana without service is a burden. There is another opportunity for center leaders where they can include bhajans in all service activities before medical camps or any other seva or service programs. And lastly, we look at the avarana. The avarana is the thick cloth covering this mirror of the mind. So what is this cloth? It is our six vices, which is desire, anger, greed and attachment, pride and jealousy. This cloth is covering this mirror of the mind. We should start looking at how do we remedy this? And we have to create an awareness of the message of the Lord. Center leaders can conduct regular study circles and discussion sessions to increase the awareness levels as to why and how we can grow spiritually. Next, we look at a very nice way of bringing everything together. So we have the polluted mind, which is the dirt, the wavering nature, and the concealed and the conceals of reality. Then we've got ways to cleanse the mind. We've got service, devotion, and knowledge which is essentially the three parts that we have in the organization that can benefit us to cleanse the mind of this dirt, to help us with the wavering nature, and also help us from what conceals our divine reality. Swami has also told us that we need to look at how do we combine these three activities. So we need to amalgamate in centers the three parts as which we require for our own spiritual growth service, devotion, and knowledge. We need to design these activities in centers in which we integrate all three. So for example, at retreats or special camps, we start with bhajans, we can address the purpose of the activities, and then we can also do an activity with full awareness. There's an analogy of looking at a tricycle and understanding how all of these three parts work together. So if we look at the tricycle, the front wheel is the wheel of service and the two back wheels, one of which is knowledge and the other is devotion. And we need all three wheels to have to move in unison for balance and spiritual growth. In our next example, we also look at a clock. And here we can see the second hand, which is the path of service. And this is where we bend the body. The minute hand is the path of devotion. And this is where we mend the senses. And the our hand is the path of knowledge. And this is where we can use this to end the mind. So this is a very nice analogy. And if we look a little bit deeper, it says that this is a threefold path of karma, bhakti, and jnana. Or well, second last example is looking at a ladder. And as we look at the ladder, we look at the path of devotion. And this is the um, vertical um, sides of the ladder. And then you have the rungs of the ladder, which is the path of knowledge and also the path of service. We need devotion and knowledge as vertical poles and service as the horizontal steps or the rungs of the ladder. And lastly, we look at the analogy of a fan, devotion, service and knowledge, which are the three blades of a fan one being the path of knowledge, the path of service, and the path of devotion. So that's a very nice um, quotation that Swami has given us. And this was in 2009, where Swami says that karma, which is activity, is a natural and essential attribute of the physical body. 
It is only when the body undertakes good karmas that the mind will function well. When the mind is sound, love for God can be developed. Thus, bhakti, jnana and vairagya are interlinked and with love for God, fear of sin and morality in society. They are like the three blades of a fan. And this is where this example or this analogy of the fan is beautifully described. We go into a, st a nice story from the Ramayana, which is on how Namasmarana and service is also linked. We have Vibhishana and Hanuman engaged in a dialogue. And Vibhishana says, Hanuman, I've been chanting Rama's name for many years now, but I have not earned the darshan of Rama. Hanuman says, Vibhishana, you, are, you have participated in service to Rama. So along with the Lord's name, service is also important. The name is negative, the service is positive, and the current is our willpower. Going further, we also have a very, very interesting story by dear brother Raja Reddy. And he's been singing bhajans in Sai Kovan Hall in front of Swami between the years of 1958 and 1983, for 25 years. Brother Raja Reddy narrates a story and he says that when he was 60 years old, one day, as usual, he started a bhajan and all the students were singing with fresh and blooming voices. Naturally, Bhagavan wanted to give them more chances and he was also beginning to get impatient. So one fine morning, as he was sitting there to sing his bhajan, all of a sudden, the mic was taken away from him. Being with him for so many years, he knew that Swami had always got some kind of a hint. So he didn't react at all. After bhajans were over and arti was performed, Swami looked at him and it was just a glance, but very deep. Believe it or not, about two to three days, it was just floating bliss. Just looking at nothing else, but it was completely out of this world, a blissful feeling. This was his superb indirect lesson. One must be blessed by him to take in it the right way. You can't revolt. Ego doesn't play a part. And Swami's got a very interesting message which has been sourced from one of the radio side journals where Swami has said that, Oh fool, don't go on dragging your feet onto the bhajan right through until the grave. Come on, go off the ladder, evolve from bhajans to something more intense and increasingly inward, something more direct. So in closing, at center level, we need to look at going beyond bhajans, which does not mean going beyond namasmarana. Repeating the Lord's name is a means for liberation in this Kali age. We need to always have the name on our lips and do our work. There is a suggestion as to while packing food or while being engaged in seva activities, we can also chant Gayatri, we can chant any other mantras. And the take of message is that as center leaders, we need to integrate all the three parts, which is service, devotion, and knowledge for a balanced spiritual growth, individually and collectively. Let us not pick and choose activities which we like the most. Let us follow the prescription of Swami, being our divine doctor, completely. Then our lives can be his message. Jay Sairam.